Welcome to this session on demand planning in SAP Integrated Business Planning or IBP. In today's lesson, we will be focusing on one of the most fundamental and input impactful processes within the IBP framework. How we build a demand forecast using the IBP Excel interface. Demand planning is not just about predicting future sales. It's about creating a reliable and collaborative plan that serves as the foundation for everything else, supply planning, inventory decisions, financial forecasting, and strategic business alignment. When done right, it helps organizations reduce costs, improve customer service, and respond quickly to market changes. IBP offers a structured and flexible approach to demand planning, combining historical data, statistical algorithms, business inputs, and collaboration across functions, all in one unified environment. And one of the most powerful tools available to planners is the Excel UI, which makes it easier to view, interact with, and modify planning data. In this walkthrough, we are going to follow the entire flow of the demand planning process step by step, starting from raw sales history, applying cleansing logic, running statistical forecasts, enriching the numbers with business insight, and finally arriving at a consensus forecast that feeds into the broader IBP planning cycle. Let's begin. We will begin our planning process with the sales history initial key figure. This is the raw unprocessed sales data that, type, that typically comes from the source ERP system such as SAP, ECC, HANA or even a non-SAP system. It includes transactional data like what was sold, when it was sold, how much was sold and which customer or location it was sold to. Now, while this data is the foundation of our forecast, it isn't always perfect. In real-world business scenarios, sales history can contain a lot of noise. For example, maybe a one-time one -time bulk order was placed due to a customer's year-end budget surplus or a promotional campaign caused an unusual spike. On the other end, sales may have dropped abnormally due to a stockout or a logistics issue. If we feed this unfiltered data directly into forecasting algorithms, we may end up predicting the wrong trends. That's why we perform a statistical cleansing process. In IPP, this cleansing is done using predefined rules and intelligent algorithms. Once executed, the sales history cleansed key figure is generated. This data is now a more accurate and representative picture of organic demand. It filters out noise, smooths anomalies, and retains the true signal that reflects customer buying behavior. But our work isn't done yet. The next layer of refinement involves incorporating known adjustments from business processes, namely cuts and cancellations. This could be partial shipments, customer returns or cancellations after order placement. When these adjustments are applied to the cleanse data, we arrive at the sales history final key figure. This final view now becomes the true historical demand baseline on which we will run our statistical forecast. At this stage, the planner initiates the statistical forecast run within IBP. Now, one of the powerful features of IBP is the best fit forecast model selection. Rather than forcing the planner to choose a forecasting algorithm manually, the system can evaluate multiple models such as simple moving average, exponential smoothening, seasonal trend models or even machine learning based approaches. It then selects the one that best fits the historical data pattern for each product location combination. This intelligent selection ensures that the generated forecast is not just fast, but also statistically robust. The result of this process is stored in the statistical forecast quantity key figure. This value represents the system generated prediction of future demand based entirely on cleansed historical data and selected algorithmic models. But we know forecasting isn't just a science, it's also an art. No matter how advanced algorithm is, it cannot always predict changes in market sentiment, competitive moves, planned promotions, or customer-specific shifts. That's where planner insight and collaboration comes in. The statistical forecast value is then copied to the consensus demand key figure using a simple copy operator in IBP. This forms the starting point for collaboration and enrichment. At this point, planners have a few options. They can review the forecast and, based on market knowledge, business experience, or inputs from commercial teams, make adjustments. These changes are entered through key figures like incremental demand and promotions. As an example, suppose the marketing team plans to run a major digital campaign for a new product in a specific region. 
based on past campaigns, the planner estimates a 20% uplift in demand and records this as a promotion input. Similarly, if a key customer has committed to additional purchases not captured by history, the planner may include this as an incremental demand. These inputs don't override the base forecast. They are added on top of the consensus demand value, providing transparency and traceability. Anyone reviewing the numbers later can see what was system generated and what was manually enriched. In some cases, however, planners may prefer to directly override the forecast, particularly if the statistical value or enrichment logic doesn't make sense. Perhaps a product is being phased out or the customer has confirmed they will no longer purchase a certain item. In such cases, the planner enters a number directly into the consensus demand override key figure. Now let's talk about how the consensus demand final is calculated. This key figure is written with a smart conditional logic. It checks whether an override value exists. If the consensus demand override key figure is populated, then the final value takes the override directly. But if the override is blank, the final value becomes the sum of the base consensus demand plus incremental demand and promotions if any. This conditional setup allows flexibility while ensuring consistency and control over how forecasts are finalized. The consensus demand final now represents the planner approved, business informed and system validated forecast number. It is the result of algorithmic forecasting enriched by real world judgment. Next, this final value is copied to the unconstrained demand key figure using another copy operator. This step is important because it decouples the demand signal from any supply limitations. The unconstrained demand shows what the market truly wants, regardless of what the company can produce or deliver at that point. This demand signal is essential for downstream processes like supply planning, capacity planning and long-term financial modeling. It represents the full visibility of market requirements. In many organizations, particularly those with global operations, there might also be demand flowing in from other geographies. For example, a planner managing North America might receive consolidated demand signals from Latin America or Asia Pacific for shared production resources. These additional regional demand inputs are aggregated into the final handshake demand key figure. The handshake demand is essentially the final enterprise-wide view of expected demand that is communicated to the supply planning team. It is called handshake because it represents the formal agreement between demand planners and supply planners, the forecast that supply will now try to fulfill subject to capacity and material constraints. By the time we reach this stage, the demand planning process has transformed raw historical data into a clean, validated and collaborative forecast ready to be used in execution.